Good morning, everyone. For those of you who may be listening to this message and are not members of the Little Falls United Methodist Church, my name is Ken Griffin, and I serve the church as a lay servant, and I have been asked by our pastor, Pastor Jin, to deliver the message today. This message is a continuation, I believe, of the Easter story, and it's the narrative of the road, the walk on the road to Emmaus. And I want to begin by reading the uh, scripture text uh, for the day, which is taken from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. My brothers and sisters, hear now the gospel of the Lord. On that day, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village named Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking to each other about all the things that had happened. As they talked and discussed, Jesus himself drew near and walked along with them. They saw him, but somehow they did not recognize him. Jesus said to them, what are you talking about? And why? Are you so sad? One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have happened these last three days? What things, he asked. The things that happened to Jesus of Nazareth, they answered. This man was a prophet and was considered by God and by all the people to be powerful in everything he said and did. Our chief priests and rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and he was crucified. And we, had, and we had hoped that he would be the one who was going to set Israel free. Besides all that, this is now the third day since it happened. Some of the women of our group surprised us. They went at dawn to the tomb, but could not find his body. They came back saying they had seen a vision of angels who told him that he is alive. Some of our group went to the tomb and found it exactly as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, How foolish you are! How slow you are to believe everything the prophets said! Was it not necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and then to enter his glory? And Jesus explained to them, what was said about himself in all the scriptures, beginning with the books of Moses and the writings of all the prophets. And as they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going farther. But they held him back, saying, Stay with us, that the day is almost over and is getting dark. So we went in to stay with them. He sat down to eat with them, took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke the bread and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, Wasn't it like a fire burning in us when he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They got up at once and went back to Jerusalem, where they found the eleven disciples gathered together with the others, and saying, The Lord is risen indeed. He has appeared to Simon. The two then explained to them what had happened on the road. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Each time I read the Emmaus story, it reminds me over and over again of the fact that the message of Easter doesn't end with the resurrection of Jesus. It should remind us that the journey is not over, it's just taking on what I'd like to call a new direction. Two disciples are walking on the Emmaus Road. They're talking about the events that had happened. And Jesus appears to them and begins asking them what they were talking about. Why were they so sad? And the disciples responded, 
Are you the only person in Jerusalem who doesn't know what happened during these last three days? And Jesus asked them, what events? What happened? And they explained to him that Jesus, this man Jesus, who was considered by, to be a prophet and a great man of God, had been, had been crucified by the authorities. It wasn't until the breaking of the bread that they had that night at the meal that they realized who Jesus was. And their hearts were filled with, 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 with fire and the, and the Holy Spirit when they realized who they were talking to. And I think that we have to ask ourselves a similar question. Even though we have celebrated the resurrection of Jesus, do we really know him? Do we really know him when he said in the garden that night on Monday, Thursday, Father, not my will, but your will be done. Do we understand that even while he was dying from the cross, yes, he went to complete the act of salvation, but he also showed love and compassion and forgiveness to those who had put him on that cross and even to the repentant thief who said to him, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. I also think of the fact that Jesus has commissioned us to take care of one another. He said to the disciple John, John, there is your mother. And he said, Mother, there is your son. I believe that Jesus was telling us to take care of those we love, yet at the same time, and I believe that this is a very strong point that we can take away from Emmaus. That we need to help people in need and even strangers who enter our lives, even if it's just for a moment and then they're gone. My brothers and sisters, we are all called by God through his son Jesus to travel our personal road to Emmaus. Let us remember Christ's suffering on the cross, but let us also remember that the road to Emmaus takes us on a journey which calls us to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and serve those in need. The road is wide and long. The road is filled with trials and tribulations. But I assure you, brothers and, brothers and sisters, that for those who travel this road with Jesus, there is a reward, and that reward is heaven. Let us not go, let us not look back, brothers and sisters. Let us proclaim the message of Emmaus, which is Christ has died, but now is alive. Amen.